Dark matter, antimatter, gold. Pure gold. We've got a video message. I'm gonna have to science the shit out of this. Hit the button, baby. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... What the hell, JPL? What are you trying to tell me, man? There's something kind of queer about the title of your story. Earth might have hairy dark matter. What are you trying to tell me? Nah, that's just... The solar system might be a lot hairier than we thought. Hold on. I always thought dark matter was pretty bald. She recommended that I read the article. A new study publishing this week in the Astrophysical Journal by, by Gary Preziao of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Pasadena, California, processes the existence of long filaments of dark matters or hairs. Wait, a NASA scientist from the Jet Propulsion Lab is telling us that there are Cthulhu-like tendrils of dark matter wiggling in and out of Earth. Is that what this story is telling me? Well, fascinating. JPL science is never boring. Asterisk. You see, dark matter is an invisible, mysterious substance that makes up 27% of all matter and energy in the universe. Can't see it, can't touch it, can't taste it, can't smell it, can't lick it, can't sniff it. You can't feed it ice cream with a spoon. Man, you can't do anything with it except get grant money to study it. So let's get back to the article. Neither dark matter nor dark energy has ever been directly detected. Although many experiments are trying to unlock the mysteries of dark matter, whether from deep underground or in space. Man, why don't you guys check casinos and whorehouses for dark matter? Was that too much? Did I go too far? Okay, I apologize. Everybody knows there's no dark matter in casinos and whorehouses. According to the calculations done in the 1990s and simulations performed in the last decade, dark matter forms fine-grained streams of particles that move at the same velocity in orbit galaxies such as our own. It's kind of like Nibiru in a way. You hear people talking about it all the time. People make videos about it all the time. There's a bunch of habu, people putting up their arms, agreeing, disagreeing. And it doesn't do anything. It never shows up. So, I guess, anti-lens flares. Like, if I see darkness and where darkness is not, then I can say, hey, that's dark matter. Like, on the sun, I'm like, hey, what is that weird black blob under the sun? It's like, oh, it's dark matter. Hey, how come some uh, gravity's calculations don't calculate out properly? Oh, it's dark matter. When gravity interacts with cold dark matter, gas, during galaxy formation, all particles within a stream continue traveling at the same velocity. Preza said, Man, ain't it cool to know everything about the past? Dark matter. Dark matter Batman gonna fuck you up. You better watch out. You better be nice. Dark matter Batman is gonna take your life. Dark matter Batman! What do you dicks want for Christmas? Okay. A stream of ordinary matter would not go through Earth and out the other side. But from the point of view of dark matter, Earth is no obstacle. According to Pre Zhao's simulations, Earth's gravity would focus and bend the streams of dark matter particles into a narrow, denser hair. That's weird, because everything I know that consists of a hair is connected to a living creature. The only thing I know that isn't connected to a living creature that is a hair is on a comb. The hair is on a comb. But those comb hairs comb creature hairs. So, I don't know why we're calling this a, a hair. I mean, it's an inanimate object, right? Or does dark matter have thought? Does dark matter have language, conscience? Does dark matter have dreams? Does dark matter have a crush on anybody? These are things we need to know. I mean, serious, man. The hairs emerging from planets have both roots, the densest concentration of dark matter particles in the hair, and the tips where the hair ends. When particles of dark matter stream past through Earth's core, they focus the root of a hair where the density of the particles is about a billion times more than average. The root of such a hair should be around 600,000 miles away from the surface, or twice as far as the moon. You just tried to mess me up with all the math, didn't you? Well, it worked. What were we talking about? Oh, yes. Giant dark matter hairs going through the Earth and affecting or not affecting everything. And if dark matter doesn't really affect anything, then why are we so worried about it? And if they can't weaponize it, why would they spend so much money on it? If we could pinpoint the location of the root of these hairs, we could potentially send a probe there and get a bonanza of data about dark matter. Okay, I guess what he's saying is that if we, we could actually detect the dark matter, watch the dark matter, and observe the dark matter, we could then get a whole lot of data from the dark matter. But I'm guessing until you can watch it, observe it, find it, you won't get much real data out of dark matter. People will write a whole lot of papers, though. This is what I know. Dark matter is kind of like NASA's beard. Really? 
NASA has a dark matter beard now. How very Hufflepuff of them. Further study is needed to support these findings and unlock the mysteries of the nature of dark matter. Do we spend this much study on light matter? Can I get a breakdown in graphical representations of how much money and time and resources we are spending on studying light and darkness? If darkness is winning, I would say why. God bless everyone. Have a great day.